Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Um, in our last series, we dealt with the mitzvah of saying the Shema. And in the Shema, we dealt with the last, uh, last two lectures, the last paragraph, and the Shema dealt with the tzitzit, the fringes that we wear, the threads. Now, in the Shema Yisrael, the mitzvah of tefillin are mentioned twice. So I thought that this would be an apropos to discuss this very special mitzvah that we do six days a week, again, to be putting on to tefillin. Now, this mitzvah of putting on tefillin is so precious to God that he even wears tefillin himself. In our tefillin, we have the four portions that are found in the Torah, which we'll discuss shortly. But the question is asked, what portion is found in God's tefillin? And the answer is, Mi ka'amcha Yisrael goy echad ba'aretz. Who is like your nation Israel, one nation in the land? That's what it says in his. Now, Nakshoni tells us that tefillin are a garment of splendor for the Jewish nation. They show us God's treatment of the children of Israel is supernatural, in contrast to the nations of the world, whom God treats in a very natural way. The Gentile world is commanded to perform only logically based in society-related mitzvot, since they themselves are bound only by the laws of nature. The Jewish nation, however, transcends nature, and therefore does so, therefore so, so does their conduct. The tefillin that we wear exhibit this condition, which makes them a garment of splendor. It has been noted that the pharaohs, the kings of Egypt, wore a small square box on their heads, exactly where we put our tefillin. This was worn as a sign of royalty. The Maral of Prague tells us that the two tefillin correspond to the two types of relationships that we experience with God Almighty, that of love and that of fear or awe. The tefillin shel yad, the one worn on the hand, correspond to love and are therefore firmly and closely tied to the body of the person wearing them. Whereas the tefillin shel rosh, those that are placed on our heads, correspond to fear or awe. The straps are not wound at all, since fear is connected with detachment and aloofness. Now both the head and hand tefillin contain within them the same four paragraphs that are found in the Torah. In the tefillin of the head, these are divided into four separate compartments. In tefillin of the hand, all four paragraphs are together in one compartment. The Chinuch <clears throat> states that the concept of these four portions in the tefillin, rather than any others, is that they contain accepting the heavenly yoke of servitude, the unity of God, and the idea of leaving Egypt. Since these are the foundations of Judaism, we are commanded to place these foundations between our eyes and upon our hearts. Now the first paragraph is Kaddishli Kol Petor Rechem, Sanctify for me the first of all that opened the womb that shows the children of Israel have been sanctified by God. Second paragraph, Vahoya Kiviacho Hashem, and it will be when God will bring you, indicates that the divine attribute of justice required the destruction of Egypt and its people. Otherwise, God would not have destroyed them. The third paragraph, Shema Yisro. Hero Israel indicates that the children of Israel were uniquely chosen to accept the dominion of the one and only God upon themselves. In the fourth paragraph, Vahoya Im Shemoah, and it will be if you listen, indicates that the choice of the children of Israel is a constant and ongoing process, not a one time event. Hashem Himself is not only constantly and personally involved in the fate of the Jewish nation as a whole, but also in the lives of each and every individual Jew within the nation. So the first paragraph in the Tefillin indicates God is eternal. The second paragraph, that he is omnipotent. The third paragraph, the concept of Hashkocha Pratis, will be called divine intervention. And the fourth paragraph, the concept of divine punishment and reward. 
the tefillin shel rosh, the tefillin of the uh, head, have four compartments. Whereas the hand tefillin, tefillin shel yad, have only one compartment. So the four compartments of the head tefillin allude to the fact that people, in general, have different intellectual abilities, different ways of perceiving information, and different personalities. God did not create us to be carbon copies of each other. He has given each one of us, each one of us, special uniqueness so that we can serve him as individuals. However, in the tefillin that are bound on the muscle of our arm, there is only one compartment. And that is to tell us that though we all have different thoughts about mitzvot, when it comes to the actual performance of the mitzvah, we are all the same. We can only fulfill our obligation by following the command of God Almighty exactly the way it is found in his Torah. We cannot innovate. Now according to the Shlach HaKadosh, the four compartments of the head to fill in, allude to the four senses that are found in one's head. Sense of sound, the sense of sight, the sense of smell, and the sense of taste. There is only one compartment in the hand to fill in, and this alludes to the only sense that is not found in the head the sense of touch. A person is motivated in two ways, by his intellect and by his emotions. We place our tefillin on our head, the seat of our intellect, and on our bicep, which is next to our heart, the seat of our desire. We do this in the hope that we will, be, it will help us to control our thoughts and our emotions so that we can serve God properly. As alluded to in the Shema, as it says, the eye sees and the heart desires. We are instructed to put on the tefillin shel yad before the hand tefillin, before the tefillin shel rosh, the head tefillin, to teach us that even if one does not truly understand the reason why God commanded us to perform a certain mitzvah, still, one should do the act and then study and try to find the reason for the action. However, in the end, all of the mitzvot, whether we see some logic in them or not, are what we call ratzon Hashem, the will of God. Now, this concept connects with the words that our ancestors said when they received the Torah at Har Sinai, at Mount Sinai. They said, Na sevenishma, we will do and then we will listen. The commentaries tell us that these words mean that we will fulfill even those commandments we don't understand, nasa, and then we will study the nishma in the hope of finding some logic in our fulfillment of the command. Now in the book of Shemot in the portion of Bo, chapter 13, verse 9, it states that tefillin should be l'chol l'ot, for you as a sign. Again, this is referring to tefillin shel yad, the hand tefillin. However, it does not say this with the tefillin shel rosh, the head tefillin. Now, in reference to the tefillin shel rosh, the head tefillin, it states in the book of Devarim, in the portion of Kisavo 28.10, that all the nations will see that the name of God is called upon you, and they will be afraid of you. Now, the Gemara, the Talmud in Bracha 6a states, this fear of being afraid of you, this refers to the tefillin shel rosh, the head tefillin. You know, there's a story told that one morning robbers broke into the house of the Vilna Gon while he was there with his students. The robbers began ransacking the house, looking for valuables. And when they found very little of any value, they began to beat the students trying to get information of where money or jewels may be hidden. With all the commotion, the gong was in the next room, and when he heard all the noise, he came out, and he was dressed in his talit and tefillin, and when the robbers saw him, they ran in fright. His students asked him, why did the robbers run away, run away when they saw you? And he answers, 
Because the, tefillin, because the robbers saw my tefillin shall rosh, my head tefillin. That answer didn't fit to them. They said they too were wearing their tefillin. And that didn't cause any fear in the robbers. So what's the difference? And he told them that there was a difference between his tefillin and theirs. Their tefillin were al harosh, were on their heads, external, whereas his was shell rosh, a part of his head, internal. Now the reason that the tefillin shel yad are put on first, and the tefillin shel rosh are removed first, is because there are three agents of sin: the eye sees, the heart desires, and the hand and/or sexual organ acts. So the majority of these organs are closer to the hand and therefore require greater protection from sin. So therefore they are put on first and removed last. In addition, they are covered when they are worn in contrast to the head villain, which are always visible. I think we're going to stop here. And next week, again, with Bezos Hashem, the helpful God will continue and finish off the ideas. I don't want to push them all into one quick package. Now again, with that, hopefully, you can hopefully bring in the coming of Mashiach Zakenu quickly and in our time. Shabbat Shalom, and again, thank you for coming.